Hey, great. Thanks for joining me today, King. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. I'm glad to be able to do so. Yeah, I'm glad. Um, before we jump into talking about you and your work a little bit, I wanted to just say that uh, Modern West Residency is an interesting program because as a commercial gallery, there's not a lot of commercial galleries that have a residency program. And this is a, a unique situation that was started by Modern West um, with support from Diane Stewart, who started the gallery um, a few years ago. And the whole intention is to create a space that is um, not just ex exhibit and market local artists' work, but also to give emerging and mid-career artists a chance to just have space and time and a professional network to help them take their work, hopefully, to a different level or try new things, maybe find some new clientele. So. Um, I appreciate that you're interested in this program and you're here and hopefully we meet some of those goals during your time with us. Yeah, this is a great opportunity. I mean, I know that this is a commercial gallery, but having, like you said, a residency program, it's, it's just really good and generous for you guys to actually do that because it takes um, resources from you guys. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, I think it's really fun. So it's also like we get, we get a lot of joy out of having the program here and getting to work with all of you. So it's... Uh, um, I, I'm glad that you see all those benefits in it as well. And your residency started February 1st, and it's going to run through the end of April. Um, so you're you're almost a month in, like three weeks in right now, um, starting week number four. Really, it goes by really quickly. It does go by quickly. So um, before we talk about your work, I'm just curious if you could tell us a little bit more about your background, where you come from, what brought you to the arts, and how you got to Salt Lake City. So I'm from Malaysia, um, I was born and raised there, and I've always liked art, and I uh, went to art school, and then eventually uh, I came to BYU for graduate school, I, I got an MFA here. Mm -hmm. I came in 2013, and I stayed after, I graduated three years later, it's supposed to be a two-year program, I think, but I took my time, I went to all the study abroad, took my time, and I graduated in end of 2016, had a family, and just ended up staying here. I mean, I lived in Provo, yeah. I still do, and uh, I, I really like being in here. Great, great, and you also, you're not just an artist, you have several other irons in the fire as well, is that correct? Well, one other. I, I, one other. I have a picture framing business, mm -hmm. um, and it's getting busy. And so this is a time that's quite exciting. I mean, I'm having this residency, which is a great opportunity. At the same time, trying to uh, get a handle on a growing business. Yeah. And so it's it's a challenge, but it's a good challenge. It's a good problem to have. Great, great. Yeah. Um, so I know that your 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 process takes some time. So I'm glad that you have the time. You're carving out that time to be here with us. And I'm I'm curious to know because you have a fairly consistent style, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm curious to know uh, what are some kind of through lines in your concepts or things that you include in your work? Um, so I am very interested in like control and chaos, so order and chaos. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I, I have been interested in that. And as a, as a kid, you don't think about order and chaos. But, but to me, it was like, oh, like my body is valuable. I could be hurt. Mm -hmm. um, I will die. I, I remember when I was four years old, I realized that one day I will die. And that put the fear, like, I don't know why, but I just felt it. Never since I've been very interested in, like, okay, you know, like, I know that all these things are kind of inevit inevitable. How can I? stop it or delay it, like control, you know? Mm -hmm. um, e even now, like, I mean, I think about it, every day we, we brush our teeth, we dress up, we have a haircut, we shave, we do all these things. It's, it's all an effort to keep this chaos at bay. It's all our daily rituals that we kind of cover a little circle of order in mm -hmm. our lives. And I've always been very interested. No, I mean, it's, it's a wonder to me that every day we wake up and the sun is out and I look out the window of my house and everything is orderly. Like, <laughs> there's no chaos, nothing is breaking down, the, the earth isn't burning up yet, right? So, <laughs> like, to me, I, I, I really appreciate that, that we've managed to 
to, to create this existence mm -hmm. amidst so much that could go wrong. Yeah. You know, um, and yeah. I'm curious, there's two pieces in process behind this. Are there, are there some ways that you feel like you um, regularly incorporate that into your practice directly? Like, I mean, is yeah, there, yeah. I mean, I see there's splatters in this piece or there's some movement in the brush strokes. Is that yeah, like well, the, the splatter is a way for me to kind of see control over the chance, right? So the splatter is a lot of the brush with a lot of paint and I just splatter it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I control the, the density of the spray, I control the colors, but other than that, I have nothing, no direct control over it. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to overlay this kind of chaotic patterns with, I mean, rods, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, straight, and they're, they're always straight, and they're always either straight, and then the other one will come at a right angle, and, and I mean, uh, that's a very direct reference to the square, I mean, as, as a frame maker, it's very important for the frame to be exactly square, 90 sure. degrees, and so, to me, that's, that's the order aspect, you know, and so I overlay them, um, there are other, paintings that I do, images that I do too, that are more like, less, um, less literal. Okay. Um, they're more like, incense. Okay. I, I, you know, I come from a Buddhist background, and mm -hmm. we used to burn incense. Mm -hmm. and, and there are temples back home where the incense is like, 10 feet tall and like, 6 inches wide, and okay. you stake it on the ground, and how and like the smoke that comes like a burning uh, house from the farm. Wow. I mean, like if you think about it, it's it's a column of literally a column of wood dust, and it's burning. Yeah. It's creating this chaos, this entropy. <laughs> but the, the the symbolism of of incense is that we are imploring, I guess, supernatural help to help us in our quest to instill some order in this. And so I, I find that that side by side, I guess, juxtaposition of these yeah. two, very poignant, very interesting. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and dust, dust is the byproduct of chaos. Like, you know, dust is what breaks down and yeah. it becomes gray. And, and, and so it's really interesting to me. Smoke, things like that. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's it's it's great it's great to get some additional insight into your work because I I feel like the work that I've seen of yours is very modern in a lot of ways it's kind of minimal and it's um, as as I read about your work and about uh, your process I started to see that sort of reigning in of chaos into these minimal modernist sort of forms so that's uh, really helps kind of inform I think my understanding of your work yeah even. Um... For example, I, I do incorporate shadows in a lot of these, like the rods of the shadow. And the shadow is, for example, like us, we always have a shadowy self. There's always a part of us that we want to suppress, ignore. Yeah. That's more chaotic. I see. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and specifically with your time here in residency, are there things that you're going to maybe pursue that are new or different in your process? Yeah, um, I, I want to incorporate some new materials, okay. um, some kind of new paints that would probably be more visually interesting. Um, I'm trying to do a more cohesive series now where one, like they could be probably displayed together as one work mm -hmm. or they could even be separated into different ones. So we will see what happens. I, I may do works on paper. Oh, okay. I feel like paper is more of a sketch, so it allows a little bit, a little bit more freedom, you know, as yeah. opposed to preparing the canvas and yeah. planning it out. Yeah, a lot of investment in that before yes. the investment. Yeah, yeah, the investment could could stop me from being as 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 free as I okay. want to give it to. I'm I'm very interested to see those pieces. I'm curious to see that play out. Yeah, and um, and are there any other materials you plan on bringing in as far as the uh, Different kinds of paints or mediums? Yeah, um, it's, um, I, I like black. Okay. And I'm doing this black that's Stuart Sample, that's the darkest dark okay. available next to Vanta Black. And yeah. So I, I want, I, I've tried with that. It's, it's a real, it's an amazing black. Huh. Like you, you, really, you really can't see it. it. It looks like a hole. And so I'm trying to experiment with that and see if it works with, with the, the images that I make. Great. 
I'm uh, in, in colors and glitter. I don't know. I, I just want to be more free. Okay, great. Well, I, I, at some point, we should pull out some work from other artists that that are playing with materials you're talking about, and I look forward to sharing some of that with you. But um, I, you know, you have what five more weeks, I think, of work until the show. So your show opens April fifteenth. Um, 6 to 8 p.m. Folks are welcome to come and see your work then. People are also welcome to drop by and say hi to you when you're here in the gallery. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see how the rest of your residency plays out and I look forward to working with you more. Thank you. Likewise. Yeah. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Yeah.